Sober-mindedness is not just knowing who I am and who I'm not. It's knowing the season of life that I'm in, where I'm going, what I'm coming from. It's to take these seasons and, and to be in this season. Right. For example, a time to born, be born. Some of us, we don't celebrate life enough. We don't celebrate. We think a, when something good happens, we think it's an hour party or it's, a, it's an event that took place. But we're to linger and celebrate. The Hebrews, the Old Testament, man, they knew how to party. A wedding was a week. They celebrated it. And we move by things so fast. We don't know how to grieve in our culture. Grief might be some of the hardest work you will ever do in your life. And we think it's going to be done in an hour service. When you lose someone in your life, you never get over that. You learn to live with it, but you will never get over it. I'm so grateful for things like grief share. Helps people through the process of grief. And divorce care helps people through the pain and the hurt of, of divorce. Be in that season. Linger there. Don't rush through it. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. We're in the middle of a series called The Search. What are we searching for? Uh, meaning and purpose in life. And you can go online. You can listen to the first two messages. Today we're going to find ourselves in chapter 3. Maybe one of the more familiar passages. Uh, our secular culture reads this passage or has sung this passage or has listened to it in a movie or a TV series. This is familiar language even among our secular culture. It's Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And what have we been learning as we've, go, as we've gone through this passage is 37 times the author says, under the sun. All throughout these 12 chapters, under the sun, another common theme of chasing the wind, trying to find meaning and purpose in, in this world. Jim Carrey said in Reader's Digest in 2006, he said, I think everyone should get rich and famous and do everything they ever dreamed of so they can see that is not the answer. Theologian Peter Kreft says Ecclesiastes is like getting A's in every subject of life, but then flunking life itself. Chasing after the wind, searching and chasing everything under the sun. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. There's good news in this first verse. Did you see it? Everything. Everything you have ever experienced is what was experienced a couple thousand years ago when this was written. For everything, there is a season. Now, the good news is if it's good, right, it's good. Enjoy it. Appreciate it. Recognize it. Be grateful for it uh, because it may not last. Uh, the good news is if it's bad, if it's a difficult season, this too shall pass. Because why? It's a season. Nothing that you and I have ever experienced will last forever under the sun. It's temporary. It's a season. A time, what you're experiencing today, a lot of different feelings, a lot of different experiences. Graduates, you're experiencing a new season. You are entering into a new season of your life. Verse 2. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. Yes, church, you can dance. <laughs> I've got an amen. A time to cast away stones. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. I like that verse, so I'm not a big hugger, so I don't need to hug. There's a time to not hug. <laughs> a time to seek, a time to lose, 
a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silent and a time to speak. Oh, give us wisdom on when to know what that is, right? When to say something and when to keep our mouth shut, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Some really interesting lists there. A time to kill is not the word found in Exodus 20 of murder. It's a time to defend and protect and go to war. There is a time for that. What is the author saying here? The author is saying the same thing that some of the bands said when I was in high school. Smashing Pumpkins, Alice in Chains, Nirvana. No amens on that. But they said things like they do us a favor when they admit in their lyrics that all of life is meaningless without God under the sun. It's a joke. It's a sick, bad joke told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing. A time. What time? In an email that went out to the church this week, I asked you if you, if you had a few moments to read chapter 3, and to ask yourself, what season are you in? What time do you find yourself in? There are seasons that come upon us that we did not ask for, and then there are seasons that we've entered into just based on the natural rhythm of life or based on decisions that we've made, based on our parenting, maybe based on marriage or divorce. There's different seasons that, that come and go. There's two types of time that's referenced in Scripture. It's important to note what the author is talking about here. The first type of time in Scripture is chronological time. That's the time that we, you and I talk about. It's our seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, years, decades, centuries. That's the chronological time. That's what you're thinking about what you're going to do this afternoon. Many of you are thinking about that right now as I'm talking, right? What, what you're going to do at 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock, what are you going to do tonight, what are you going to do on Monday morning, that's chronological time. And what we would say on chronological time is, hey, be in this moment. Be in the moment that your feet are in, right? Be present with whatever moment that you find yourself in. Be there. That's something I have always struggled with in life because I, I, I can't wait for what's next. Uh, I, I remember as a kid, I can't wait for vacation. I can't wait till spring break. I can't wait for Christmas. I can't wait. And my mom would say, stop waiting your life away. My mom was a very godly woman. I, I love my mom. She said some very wise things. But the next thing she said, I wouldn't attribute as one of the wisest things she would say because I was like seven years of, of age. And I'd say, I can't wait. I can't wait. And she said, stop. Stop waiting. You're going to die of an ulcer. <laughs> I remember at seven, I'm like, whoa, mom. That's kind of violent. But she, that was one of her sayings. Son, you're going to die of an ulcer. Because I, I, I kept waiting for what was next that I missed the present. I had FOMO, fear of missing out. I was the first one in the van waiting for my six siblings because we got to get there. got to get there early. Some of you are wired that way. Uh, we, we got, I got to be the first one because what if something happens before I get there? Or what if something happens after I leave? I don't want to miss it. Be, be in the moment. Don't waste your, your life away by waiting for what is to come, because here's the reality, it may never come, right? And so enjoy what, what you currently have. So that's chronological time, chronos time. God is outside chronos time. God is not bound by chronological time. You and I, we're bound by chronological time. The Bible says 70, 80 years, plus or minus. That's our time. That's what we have. It's very itty-bitty compared to our everlasting, eternal God. The next type of time that this author is speaking of and Jesus speaks of throughout the gospel is kairos time. Kairos time are significant moments. We use this when we say back in the day, right? We're not talking about a specific time. Back in the day. I, I look forward to one day. We don't know when that day is, but I look forward to one day. It's a kairos moment. It's the moment Jesus says when they come to arrest him. The time, the kairos has come. Kairos moments require decisions. They require action. They're significant. I remember sitting down with someone at a previous church environment. I'm like, hey, tell me, tell me how God has moved in your life here recently. 
And they started by saying, well, I came to know Jesus in 1980. And they talked about coming to know Jesus in 1980. And then the conversation ended. I said, well, well what's happened the last 30 years? Right? Following Jesus as a, as a follower of Jesus requires movement, requires action, plans. Jesus is on the move and we're to be following him. And if any of us in the room, you know, the first challenge here is, is, is there status quo for any one of us? Because God's calling us, so know, there's, there's a time. There, there, there's significant moments. There's decisions that need to be made. There's plans that have to be prepared for. Because God is on the move, and I want to be a part of what God is doing. And that's, that's true personally. That's true in your family. That's true in the church. Let's go. God is on the move. There are kairos movements in kairos moments. What are we to look to in scripture to learn how to determine the season that we're in? This is, might be a shocking one. The author of Proverbs says, look to ants. Really? Ants? That's what we're going to look at? Little itty bitty ants? Proverbs 6, 6 says, look to the ant and be wise. Sometimes just looking at creation and the creatures that God has made teaches us some things. Why are we to look to ants? For they know what season it is. Proverbs 30, 25. They are not strong, but they store up food in the summer and they live according to that season. Followers of Jesus, do you know what season that you are in currently? We just listed, the author listed a number of them. There's positives and there's negatives. But there's actually, throughout Ecclesiastes chapter 3, there's three lists. Positives and negatives. And what's the third one? Ultimate. Ultimate. Oh, is that positive? Is it negative? It's whatever you choose to do for the honor and the glory of God as you enjoy him and him forever. You could grieve you, you could be in a time of planting. You could be a time of pulling it up. Whatever your season you're in, it's not necessarily positive or negative. That's how under the sun it would be described. But it's what you choose. It's your perspective that you have on what you're going through. That this is for the honor and the glory of God. What I'm going through, although I may not have chosen this season of life that I am in, I'm not going to simply look to this earth. I'm going to do it for, for the glory of God. Recognizing that there's only one person that we have a relationship with in this, in, this, in this universe who is not under the sun. He is over the sun. He created the sun. Colossians 3 says he's holding the sun together. Everything in the universe is being held in this very moment by Jesus. We are not under the sun as a follower of Jesus. We are under him. And we are to look at him. We're not to look at this way. We're to look up. Colossians 3 says, therefore, if you've been raised with Christ. So now we're talking to people who've given their faith, given their life to Jesus. Colossians 3 says, therefore, if you've been raised with Christ, keep seeking the things above. Church, stop being distracted by all the stuff happening down here. Keep seeking the things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Everything you do on this earth, if you do it, all right, everything that we were created for was not for a what, it was for a who. And you get to decide who that who is. And if, 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 if the who is me, then I'm living dust to dust. But you were not created for a what, you were created for a who. And that who is a personal relationship with Jesus who sees you today, he knows, every, he knows what season you're in, he knows what season you just came out of, he knows what season you're about to enter into. And some of us, it's, it's really important to be sober-minded about the season that we're in. Sober-mindedness is not just knowing who I am and who I'm not. It's knowing the season of life that I'm in, where I'm going, what I'm coming from. It's to take these seasons and, and to be in this season. Right. For example, 
the time to born, be born. Some of us, we don't celebrate life enough. We don't celebrate. We think a, when something good happens, we think it's an hour party or it's, a, it's an event that took place. But we're to linger and celebrate. The Hebrews, the Old Testament, man, they knew how to party. A wedding was a week. They celebrated it. And we move by things so fast. We don't know how to grieve in our culture. Grief might be some of the hardest work you will ever do in your life. We think it's going to be done in an hour service. When you lose someone in your life, you never get over that. You learn to live with it, but you will never get over it. I'm so grateful for things like grief share. Helps people through the process of grief. And divorce care helps people through the pain and the hurt of, of divorce. Be in that season. Linger there. Don't rush through it. Spend time talking to God. Take time off work. Our culture is just go, 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 go. What's next? What's next? So check that off the list. And some of these seasons last longer than we would care for them to. But do the work. Right? If it's good, celebrate it. If it's painful, do the hard work to identify why does it hurt? What happened? Process through that. Make plans to move out of that season as much as it depends on you. We're to be on the move. There are different seasons that we are to walk, to walk through. Uh, your time is, is your life. Let me talk about the four seasons because I think this list in chapter 3 can be can be summarized by four seasons. Now, I grew up in the Midwest. We actually have four seasons. Uh, here we kind of have two. But uh, most of us, we moved from somewhere else. The question isn't, you know, the question we ask everybody is, how long have you lived here? And so if, if you're from another part of the country, you understand seasons. And this list in Ecclesiastes 3 can all be narrowed down to one of the four seasons of life. Spring. In the, in the Midwest, it was when the snow was melting and your backyard's nothing but mud. Right? There's a transitioning happening. It's messy. It's the first time you get to mow the lawn. It's the first time you get to wear shorts. There's, there's new life about to happen. Some of you are in that season. You, graduates, you're in that season. You're in spring. You're about to enter all new. New growth, new life, new environments, new places to live, new studies and new jobs. Summer. Here in Arizona, it's the first 100 degree day is officially when it's summer, right? I think it might be this week or it was this week. Uh, for us, it's when we take everything out of the garage that we put in the garage over winter because it's going to melt. So we have to move it out of the garage or, or else it's going to die. But the idea of summer is everything's are flourishing. Things are good. Your life, there's, there's good moments and you're, it's, it's a good season that, that you're in. And I would say if, those, if there are things in your marriage that are good, keep doing those. You're like, wow, real, real wise words today, Kyle. Uh, <laughs> if it's good, keep doing it. If, if you're getting what you want in your marriage, in your family, in your parenting, in your work, keep doing that. Let it be summer. Let things flourish and grow and keep investing into what's working. If it's not working, stop doing that. Stop doing the things that you're not getting the return that you want in all of those relationships. Fall is when, it's not just when you take that first pumpkin spice latte. It's when, it's when you're aware that things are about to die. This, this job's about to end. This, this relationship with this person's about to end. Right? My, maybe my parent, my grandparent might, is about to die. It's, it's the first signs where th this is not going to last forever. The good things in our life, they're not going to last forever. So fall is that season. It's the first sign of death. Winter, it's the first frost, the first snow. It's, it's, it's difficult times. Nothing's growing, it feels like. What do you do in winter? You wait for spring. Right? And it's the cycle of life. 
And some of us, we're, we're in seasons. We might be entering into retirement. We might be selling a business. We might be starting a business. These are different seasons that we're in. It's good to know what season are you in. And if we're trying to move out of a season, then it requires a plan. If there's a hurt, if there's a habit, if there's an addiction that we've been wrestling with, we don't get to just simply press a button and move out of that and move into a new season. No, you have to replace it with something. You don't, for example, alcoholism. You don't just simply say, I'm going to stop being alcoholic. It's got to be, you have to replace that desire with another desire. And I would argue it's, it's a personal relationship with Jesus that can fix and break every addictive habit on this planet. Amen. That gives meaning. That gives purpose. Not just a, another clinic. That's not going to be ultimately. That's not the ultimate, right? There's good and there's bad and there's ultimate. You and I were designed to be plugged in to a relationship with Jesus. Recently, I was going through a drawer. Maybe we all have one of these drawers in our house. This is the drawer I pulled open recently. And I, I didn't bring the entire bin. It's a really big bin full of cords and cables. Does anybody else have a drawer like that? It's like, I don't know what this is for. I don't know when we got it. Well, this goes to something. And so I'm going to keep it. Because someday I might need that computer from 2002. And as soon as I throw it away, I'm going to need it. You might be like, you know, you're keeping that screw because you know that screw goes to something really important, but you don't know what it is. Every one of these cables had a purpose, but you have to understand the context. You were created for a purpose and with a purpose by a, pur by a purpose given God. He created you for a very specific purpose. And it is a sweet place when you realize what that purpose is. And there's been times in my life where I feel like I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. You know, I've got adapters for adapters. And the, re the re reality is a lot of these things well, I'll never use again. So why am I holding on to them? Your purpose and my purpose. One purpose only. To glorify God and enjoy him forever. That is why you and I were created and it's just such a short little blip in the scope of eternity. And it is a sweet and beautiful thing when you recognize, oh, I know what this is for. You plug it in and it works. I know what this is for. For me, let me share personally with you here recently, it became really crystal clear what God has asked me to do. Some people have mission statements for their whole life. And I, I think that's a beautiful thing if you can do that. For me, it's changed over the years. Right now, God's calling me to be the best husband I can be, the best dad I can be. And then after that, to love and lead a church. And he's made that crystal clear to me. So I've gotten off a couple other organizations I was a part of. I stopped doing some other things that I enjoyed doing because God said, that's not what I'm asking you to do right now. This is what I'm asking you to do to love and lead this church. And I, thanks for your grace, because I need some help with that sometimes. I'm not perfect in that. But that's what God has called me to do in this season. I don't know what it is for you. Have you found that? What, God, what your purpose is right now? Because it's not God's desire that you be an adapter in a drawer not being used. To be plugged in and realize I have purpose and I have meaning. And whether I'm going through grief or joy or healing or being uprooted or weeping or laughing, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. It is all about perspective, my friends. It's all about perspective. Two people can go through the very same thing. And one, it will be counted for eternity and remembered for eternity. And the other, dust to dust. You know what perspective is? It's a little boy who showed up at the high school team. He's in junior high. He's trying to make the baseball team. And he shows up. And he's like, Coach, you've never seen a, a better hitter than, than me. And he takes the ball. And he takes the bat. And he throws the ball up in the air. He takes a swing. And he misses. Strike one. He's like, Coach, I'm telling you, I'm the best hitter that you've ever seen. Best hitter that's ever come through the school. So he takes the ball. And he throws it up again the second time. He takes a swing. And he misses again. It's like, Coach, it's okay. I got, a third, I got a third one. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if you allow me to be on your team, I'm going to be the best hitter 
that's ever come through this school. So he takes the ball for the third time, throws it in the air. He takes hard, the hardest swing he's ever taken, and he misses in strike three. He turns and he says to the coach, Coach, I'm the best pitcher that you've ever seen. <laughs> that's perspective. You're going through it. Change your perspective. You're going to go through all of these times. You're going to go through them. May your perspective be vertical, not horizontal. Right? Colossians 3 says, if you've been raised with Christ, keep seeking the things above. Our focus is on Jesus, who is above the sun. Right? The author is talking all about life under the sun, chasing the wind, never getting. But your focus above the sun is on, is on Jesus. As a church, we're going through a season. It's, and for some of us who've been here a long time, it's hard, it's difficult. A time to purge, a time to throw away, a time to plan, a time to renew, a time to replant. 40 years this church has been here. I'm so grateful. We stand on the shoulders of a lot of commitment and decisions and generosity. To reach people that we're currently not reaching is going to require us to do some things we're not currently doing. So it's a new season. What does it look like in, in your life? Moses wrote a psalm. I know you, some of us might be thinking, I thought all the psalms were written by David. Moses wrote a few. Psalm chapter 90. Moses writes this. Lord, you've been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You and I live with the understanding that God is everlasting to everlasting. He never had a beginning. He'll never have an end. And we're just a little blip on that eternity scope. You return man dust to dust and say, return, O children of man. And then Moses writes, for a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday when it is past. Or as a watch in the night. God is not bound by the time like you and I are bound by. But Moses says, this is, this is an important passage. Moses says, don't you miss the purpose that God has for your life. It's Moses who left the palace, he says, it's worth it. I'd rather leave the palace and follow the purpose that God has for me to leave the Hebrew children out of slavery. I'd rather do that than live the rest of my life in the palace with no purpose. What's the purpose that God has for you? What are you sensing in your life? It begins with recognizing the season that you're in. And some of us, let's say parents, we go through different seasons of parenting. It begins as a caretaker, changing diapers. Then you move into being a cop, right? Telling them everything, what they should do and not do. Don't touch that. Don't hang out with them. Don't go there. And then you move into a coach. And then finally, you're a consultant. You only speak when spoken to. You only give wisdom and advice when they ask for it. And our prayer is that they would turn to, to God's wisdom God's advice. It's good to have wise people in our life who can speak truth to us. I'll call up some people and I'll share for 20, 30 minutes. And wisdom is when they can take what I just shared and give me a one or two sentence response and everything makes sense. Like, whoa, it's great clarity. That's wisdom to take something specific and to generalize it to a point of a couple sentences. Well, here's what I see. Whatever you're going through, you can do it for the honor and the glory of, of God. Now, Jesus shows up onto the scene, and he talks a lot about he, that he comes from above. In John, in John 17, 3, this is eternal life, that they know you, the only one God in Jesus Christ whom you have sent. In John 8, 23, is even more clear. Jesus says, you are from below. That's us. I am from above. You are of this world. Jesus says, I am not of this world. That is good news. That allows us, in everything we do under the sun, we can do it with ultimate purpose and meaning. Because that comes only from Jesus, 
who loves you and sees you, knows your hurts, and knows your pain, and he seeks to redeem the time that you have. You and I can't redeem anything. Only Jesus can redeem. You and I can reclaim some things. We can, as Joseph says, hey, what you meant for evil, God meant for good. There are things in your life that are meant to hurt you. In a personal relationship with Jesus, you can take those things and those can be turned for good. So there's some things we can reclaim, but only Jesus can redeem. And that begins with redeeming you and buying you back from the, this world of sin and pain and hurt. And requires us and asks us, he asks us to surrender. And to say, I, I admit I've been chasing everything under the sun. I've been, I've been searching and chasing after the wind and I haven't found it. And I'm done chasing. I want meaning and purpose in my life. I want the ultimate. And you surrender and you, you recognize that everything from this day forward has meaning and purpose. If there's anything I said today that you feel like I, I want to talk more, I, I need a plan because I've been stuck in this season. I, I need a plan to move out of this season. I would love to have that conversation with you. We have leaders of different ministries that would love to come alongside you and sit and talk. A week from Friday, as I mentioned earlier, we, called Life's Healing Choices. It's eight weeks. It might be the first step to getting out of maybe some harmful hurts and habits that, that you've developed over your life. We, we all have them. We all have them. Would you join me in prayer? Father, I thank you for uh, th this word. And as we continue to read in Ecclesiastes 3, that you make everything beautiful in your time. Everything is made beautiful. Thank you, God, that you have set eternity in our hearts. That this is not the end. That you've You've given us purpose in me. I pray that nobody here in this room would miss that. That we would all recognize and understand that our purpose in me only comes from you and you alone. God, thank you for loving each person. Thank you that you pursue us. As we're chasing after other things, you're chasing after us. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to take a moment to say thank you for joining us for today's service online. I'm going to invite you to our website where there are a number of different action steps to take following today's service. Maybe joining a small group or finding a place to serve or sending a prayer request into the church to let us know how we can help you and how we can be praying for you. If you found this message today encouraging and supportive, I'm going to ask you to like or share or comment. And let us know and, and share that with your friends. If it's been an encouragement to you, I trust you'll be an encouragement to others as you share this resource. Hey, we've been praying for you. We're going to continue to pray for you throughout this week and trust you'll join us again next weekend. Have a great week.